Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're gonna talk about transmission ratios. Transmission ratios are simply gear ratios in the transmission, and they are speed ratios which compare the input speed to the output speed, or in other words, the crankshaft speed to the drive shaft speed. In this video, we're going to take a look at calculating the different transmission ratios in all of the different gears of a five speed manual transmission. Let's first of all take a look at the transmission and some of its components. The main components of the transmission are input shaft, counter shaft gears, speed gears, shift collars, and output shaft. The input shaft receives torque from the engine. The torque is transferred to the counter gear. This torque transfer is called the primary reduction. From here, the torque is then transferred to the speed gears that are located on the output shaft. The speed gears are represented by the red, blue, and yellow gears. These gears free float around the output shaft and are only locked in when the shift collar is engaged to the appropriate gear, forcing the output shaft to rotate at the same speed as the locked in speed gear. Before we take a look at actually calculating the gear ratios in the transmission, let's just talk in general about how we calculate any gear ratio. And I'm gonna pick a very simple example. We have two gears in mesh. This is our input gear, this is our output gear. The input gear has eight teeth, the output gear has 16 teeth. Now, we're calculating a gear ratio or a speed ratio. However, we don't know the speeds because they can be changing or the gears can just be stationary. So in order to calculate a speed ratio, we're actually gonna use the sizes. It's important to understand that the sizes are inversely proportional to the speeds. What I mean by that is that the larger gear will turn slower. So the larger the gear, the slower it turns, that's inverse proportion. So we're gonna use the sizes to calculate the speed ratio, but we have to invert them. So to calculate a gear ratio, we take the size of the output and divide by the size of the input. In our example, we would have 16 teeth for the output gear, eight teeth for the input gear. That reduces to two to one, which we can write as a fraction form or we can write it in a ratio form. What that is telling us is that our input gear is turning two revolutions for one revolution of the output. So it's how many times the input is turning compared to one revolution of the output. And when you're working with transmission ratios, you wanna always express them to one. In this case, it worked out to an even number, but it typically won't. So in those cases, you want to round off to two decimal places. Let's apply this to calculating gear ratios in the transmission. We're first of all gonna calculate the primary gear ratio. Primary reduction ratio starts with the gear on the input shaft that is meshed with the gear on the counter shaft. The input gear is on the input shaft and the output gear is on the counter shaft. The primary reduction ratio will be used in almost all of the reduction and overdrive ratios of this transmission. Let's calculate the ratio. The purple gear on the input shaft has 16 teeth and it is the input gear. The gear that it is in mesh with is on the counter shaft, it has 28 teeth and it is the output gear. So a simplified drawing of that would look like this. Our input gear has 16 teeth, our output gear has 28 teeth, so our gear ratio will be the output, 28, divided by the input, which is 16, and that's equal to 1.75 to one, or 1.75 to one. So what that's telling us is that this gear is turning 1.75 revolutions for every one revolution of this gear. In other words, our input shaft is turning 1.75 revolutions for every one revolution on the counter shaft. This primary reduction ratio will be combined with other gear ratios in what's called a compound gear train. Before we use that ratio to calculate all of the gear ratios in our transmission, we have to understand how we calculate the gear ratio in a compound gear train. So let's take a look. We've already talked about this set of gears, but let's say we now take another gear on the same shaft as this 16 tooth gear and have it in mesh with another gear. Let's say that this gear has 10 teeth and this has 30 teeth. This is called a compound gear train. 
And in order to calculate the total gear ratio, we can think of this set of gears separately and this set of gears separately. So we already know that for this set of gears, our gear ratio is output, which is 16, over input, which is 8, which is 2 to 1. Now, for this set, it's important to understand that because this is on the same shaft as this gear, they're turning the same speed, this is now the input in this set of gears, and this is the output. So the gear ratio between those two gears is also output divided by input, so 30 divided by 10, which is 3 to 1. Then in order to combine to get our total gear reduction for the whole compound gear train, we have to multiply these two gear ratios. So our total gear ratio will equal 2 to 1 times 3 to 1. A lot of times students want to add those numbers, but you have to multiply. You have to remember to multiply them. So in this case, we're going to get a total gear ratio of 6 to 1. That means that this gear is turning six times for one revolution of this. And I think that if we think backwards, we can maybe understand that. If this is making one revolution, this gear is making three because the gear ratio is three to one. We know that when this makes one revolution, this makes two. So if this is making three, this is making three, and therefore this will be making six revolutions. Hopefully that helps you understand it, but always remember you need to multiply the two gear ratios to get your total. Now that we understand how to work with a compound gear train, we can figure out all the gear ratios in our transmission. Let's start with first gear. The input gear in first gear is located on the counter shaft and it is in constant mesh with the yellow speed gear, which is freewheeling around the output shaft. When the vehicle is put into first gear, the power goes from the engine into the input shaft, then the counter shaft, up to the yellow speed gear, over to the shift collar, which slides to lock itself to the yellow speed gear, and then the power is transferred to the output shaft. The input gear has 16 teeth, and the output gear has 36 teeth. The gear ratio between those two gears is calculated output over input, which is 36 over 16, and that calculates to equal 2.25 to 1. Now in order to get the total gear ratio in first gear, we have to multiply by our primary reduction ratio, which was 1.75 to 1. We multiply by the ratio between those two gears in first gear, and we get a total of 3.94 to 1, which we can express as a ratio. And remember what that means is that the input shaft will be making 3.94 revolutions for every one revolution of the output shaft. We're going to follow this same procedure to calculate the gear ratio in the other gears. So let's take a look at second gear. The input gear in second gear is located on the counter shaft and it is in constant mesh with the blue speed gear, which is freewheeling around the output shaft. When the vehicle is put into second gear, the power goes from the engine to the input shaft, then the counter shaft, up to the blue speed gear, over the shift collar, which slides to lock itself to the blue speed gear, and then the power is transferred to the output shaft. In second gear, the input gear on the counter shaft has 19 teeth, and the output gear, which is the blue gear, has 28 teeth. So in order to calculate the gear ratio between these two gears, we take output over input, in this case, 28 over 19. That will be equal to 1.47 to 1 when we round it off. And again, to get our total gear ratio in second gear, we have to multiply by our primary reduction ratio. So 1.75 to 1 times 1.47 to 1 is equal to 2.57 to 1. In second gear, our transmission has a gear ratio of 2.57 to 1, which means the input shaft is turning 2.57 revolutions 
to one revolution of the output shaft. Now let's take a look at the transmission ratio in third gear. The input gear in third gear is on the counter shaft and it is in constant mesh with the red speed gear, which is freewheeling around the output shaft. When the vehicle is put into third gear, the power goes from the engine to the input shaft, then to the counter shaft, up to the red speed gear, over to the shift collar, which slides to lock itself to the red speed gear, and then the power is transferred to the output shaft. In third gear, the input gear on the counter shaft has 22 teeth, and the output gear, which is the red speed gear, has 21 teeth. So if we calculate the gear ratio between those two gears, we're going to have output, which is 21, divided by input, which is 22, and that will be equal to 0 0.95 to 1. You'll notice in this case that we have a number less than 1 here. And this is called a small overdrive. It means that our input gear is turning slightly slower than the output gear. It's turning 0.95 of a revolution for one revolution of our output gear. But again, we're going to find our total transmission ratio in third gear by multiplying this to our primary reduction ratio. So 1.75 to 1 times 0.95 to 1. And when we multiply, we get 1.66 to 1. So again, that means that the input shaft is turning 1.66 revolutions for every one revolution of the output shaft. Now let's take a look at the easiest gear ratio to calculate, and that's fourth gear. In fourth gear, the input shaft is directly locked to the output shaft by the shift collar. The power flow is from the engine to the input shaft, through the shift collar, and then to the output shaft. This is called direct drive, and the total gear ratio is one to one. The input shaft makes one revolution for every one revolution of the output shaft. In other words, the output shaft will turn at exactly the same speed as the input shaft. Now let's talk about fifth gear. The fifth gear input gear on the counter shaft needs to be locked to the counter shaft in order for it to turn. It is in mesh with the fifth gear output, which is splined directly to the output shaft. When the vehicle is put into fifth gear, the power goes from the engine to the input shaft, to the counter shaft, over to the shift collar, which slides and locks itself to the green gear, and then up to the gear on the output shaft. In fifth gear, the input gear on the counter shaft, which is the green gear, has 32 teeth, and the output gear on the output shaft has 15 teeth. So let's calculate the gear ratio between those two gears. The output gear has 15 teeth. The input gear has 32 teeth. So that's a gear ratio of 0.47 to 1. Again, overdrive between those two gears. But now let's combine it with our primary reduction ratio to get our total speed ratio in fifth gear. So 1.75 to 1 times 0.47 to 1. And that is 0 0.82 to 1, which is overdrive. That means that the input shaft is turning slower than the output shaft. Specifically, the input shaft is making 0.82 of a revolution for every one revolution of the output shaft. Calculating the transmission ratio in reverse is very much the same. The only difference is, is that the direction of the output shaft will change because of the introduction of an idler gear. So let's just talk about that, what an idler gear does in a gear train, and then we'll look specifically at our reverse gear and our transmission. In our very first example, we found the gear ratio between those two gears and it was two to one. If this gear is turning clockwise, then this gear is turning counterclockwise. But let's take a look at what happens when we put an idler gear between those two gears. So now our input is eight teeth, our output is 16 teeth, but we've placed an idler gear in between those two gears. First of all, let's talk about the direction. If input is turning clockwise, the idler will be turning counterclockwise, and then the output will be turning clockwise. So the idler did affect the direction of rotation of our output gear. But the question is, will it affect our gear ratio? And the simple to answer to that is no, it will not. This gear ratio is still two to one. 
And a lot of times students have trouble understanding that because they think it's got to change it. But if you think intuitively, if the output gear turns once, it's going through 16 teeth. That means that the input gear has to go around twice to go through 16 teeth. It doesn't matter what size of idler we stick in there. So when you're calculating gear ratios, you simply ignore the idler gear. Let's go back to our transmission now and calculate our last gear ratio, which is the reverse gear ratio. This is the same transmission. Teeth have been added to the one, two shift collar, turning it into the reverse gear output. The reverse idler gear is green and the reverse gear input is on the counter shaft. Power flows from the engine to the input shaft, then to the counter shaft. Notice that there is a gap between the input gear on the counter shaft and the blue output gear, and therefore they are not in constant mesh. But the green idler gear shifts left when the vehicle is in reverse to connect the input gear to the output gear. The power continues to flow from the counter shaft to the idler gear, then the output gear and output shaft. In the forward gears of our transmission, the input shaft is turning clockwise, so the counter shaft is turning counterclockwise, and therefore the output shaft is turning clockwise. However, in the reverse gear of our transmission, the input shaft turns clockwise, the counter shaft turns counterclockwise, the idler turns clockwise, and then the output shaft turns counterclockwise. The idler gear affects the direction of rotation of the output shaft, but won't affect the gear ratio, so we can ignore it in our calculations. In reverse, the input gear on the counter shaft has 15 teeth, and the output gear on the output shaft has 32 teeth. So our reverse gear ratio will be equal to 32 over 15. And that's equal to 2.13 to 1. Let's combine that with our primary reduction by multiplication. 1.75 to 1 times 2.13 to 1 to get 3.73 to 1. So when the vehicle is in reverse, the input shaft is turning 3.73 revolutions for every one revolution of the output shaft. We've now covered all of the gear ratios in a transmission. I hope that you found this video helpful in understanding and calculating transmission ratios. I would like to thank my husband, Calvin Harutko, for his expertise and technical assistance in creating this video.